My name's Greg and on this video, I started off making a chess board and I realized that no one would actually believe that I played chess since I had so much trouble making this board. So throughout this video, I'm going to refer to it as a checkerboard. Even though I play way more chess than checkers, I did not want to insult the game of chess by showing my lack of intelligence in making a couple of squares. Let me show you how I did it. And then be certain to stay for the very end of this video. And I want you to tell me if I am better at being a master chess player or my skills in furniture flipping are far superior to any of the grand masters in the chess world. Be sure to let me know. Let me mark these drawers. Nothing in there. Nothing exciting in any of the drawers. It's kind of weird as it looks like they have these drywall screws in here. Then they have these individual one by sixes, five and a half. I think this is like a handmade piece. I don't know. This isn't the right drawer, but the one thing that I noticed is you'll see on the very top, those little black screws, they're exposed. So I don't know if that was poor planning or if that's how they wanted it, but I don't like it. I'm going to assume those are glued, so I'm going to try to take those screws out and I'll probably stay there. Nope. They did not even glue them. I think I'm going to. Oh, uh, my glue's out in the other barn. Let's just take a walk out to the other barn. Casper. Okay. Uh, I don't think you've ever been out here. There's one horse stall. This stall is a little bit bigger when I'd breed mares. I'd keep those in there and there's need to milk goats or trim their hooves or whatever. This so they paint on it, stick their heads in there, clamp it shut. There you go. They stay in there so you can trim their feet or milk them, do whatever. Thought I had my glue out here. There it is. Hey, Casper. Go get him, Casper. <laughs> had to shave him and then go give him some sort of, go give him some sort of medicated bath or whatever they did. I'm just gluing this because I would like to be able to take those screws out. Once that glue dries, that'll hold that in place and then I can get rid of those screws. These are hidden so they don't matter to me as much. I do not like these poles so I know I'm going to replace those. Oh, this thing is filthy. That's a problem for painting. That's going to show up not look so nice. It's uh, not the normal size of a night. More maybe for like toddler's clothes. Or it'd be good for that anyhow. Whoever made this did not like the idea of sanding. Oh, well, these are kind of rough. They haven't been sanded. So I'm going to sand all this down really well. I think I will start off with 80 grit on the front faces. Because I got to get a lot of these marks and all of that off. Well, that's kind of interesting. If you don't know this little sanding trick, it looks like that part's kind of low. You can kind of see that not only is there a color differentiation, but it left the pencil mark in there. So for whatever reason, that dips down. I'm going to sand that so it's a little smoother. You see how thick that piece is there? And then look where it rides on on the bottom. So it looks like they routed that out to put these bottom drawers in that only allows that little bit to ride on the rails and those get worn down pretty quickly they don't slide in and out smoothly and that's why you know there's so much trouble opening that so you see that's been cracked and chipped away already so i'll be sure to put a lot of wax on there All right, I'm going to let that dry overnight, and 
Um, I've kind of decided to do a checkerboard pattern and I really want this to be an actual checkerboard so you can play checkers on it. I think, I, I'm not certain, but I think inch and a half would be a reasonable size for the squares on the checkerboard. And I think they're eight, eight by eight, but I'm, I'm not certain. So it makes it a little weird since this is a rectangle and not a square. Just want to see what that looks like. And then I'll decide on the size of the checkerboard. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put a second coat on this. I'm just going to give it a quick sand with some higher grit sandpaper. I wish I could find a spray bottle that lasted more than a couple of months. I think I'm going to do the spacers in the black also. But I think this top one is the only one that we could see, if I remember correctly. I think that's going to take another coat. That wasn't a real smooth coat of paint. Not sure why, but I don't think I'm going to like that. But I'm going to paint the drawer fronts in that gray. While I'm painting these door fronts, a couple of people asking me what I do for a living. I got to thinking I've, I've never really talked about what I do. I don't know if it's of interest to anyone other than, as, than has asked, but I actually, a long, long time ago, I got into woodworking and painting furniture, just spending time out in the shop. We had horses and stuff here that, that took up some time, but I've spent more time out in the shop doing things that I enjoy, which has always been uh, woodworking and painting furniture and stuff like that. I, I did it because my job has been stressful at times. It's all I've ever done and I enjoy it, but I work for a company called Elevance Health. I actually just changed the name not too long ago. It was Amerigroup. I've, I've held several different jobs, but they're all related to working with individuals in our community that have have an intellectual or developmental disability. So for for a lot of you that, that aren't as familiar as others might be, you think of, of young adults or children or older adults that have autism, work with eating disorders, TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, anything on the scale of an intellectual or developmental disability. And the various jobs that I've had include working directly with individuals and their families to find ways to integrate them into the community, to remove any barriers for transportation, for employment, try to find them employment. More, more recently, I, I'm working in an area that kind of oversees any medical events that might happen with these individuals or any abuse, neglect, or exploitation that might be going on in the home that they live. So I quite possibly could work for the very best company in Tennessee to work for in Elevance Health. And I could quite possibly have the best boss with Skyland. So shout out to Skyland. And there are many aspects about the job that I currently have that I really, really like. And I'm, I'm thankful to, to be working there. There wouldn't be too many ways I would ever quit that job. But one way would be to flip furniture full time, but that's not likely to pay the bills, so to speak. Plenty of volunteer opportunities out there for, for anyone. So if you ever want any rewarding volunteer hours, go, go work with a family where they have a loved one with autism or eating disorder or cerebral palsy or, you know, the list goes on and on of the opportunities that are out there. And what you'll find is you see things on the total opposite of spectrums. You see individuals and family members that do the most loving and compassionate things for their loved one that, that has an intellectual or developmental disability. And you will also find yourself seeing some of the most disgusting and vile acts that you could possibly imagine. It's a full spectrum 
and what you're able to witness and see and help with and participate in and it's very very rewarding so if you have any questions how you could volunteer or just shoot me a message and no matter where you live there's always opportunities to offer your expertise for people that interact with me they they always say how i'm pretty much always in the same mood a little bit happy maybe and they always say how are you so happy and i say you know if if you had the work experience that i had and you would see how loving and compassionate people are it just brings a smile to your face and then on the other hand if you see how nasty and maybe even inhumane for some people can be it makes you say why wouldn't you value every moment that you have because there's enough misery to go around so either way life is good except for the color choice that was made for this dresser maybe it'll turn out all right it's going to be uh black and gray in case you didn't notice that what i'm going to do is if i can get a smooth finish at the top maybe three or four coats i'll get that and i was debating on what to do with the drawers if i would do a checkerboard on that i decided against it be a little too much and i'm just going to do the checkerboard on the top i did however think about carrying that lights kind of reflecting I did think about carrying the checkerboard down to here and then extending it on the top shelf and then fading it out as we go down. But remember, we have that big gap right there. And I thought that would kind of disrupt the flow of the checkerboard. And then I thought about extending the top drawer so it goes right under there so I could do that. And I just... And after thinking more about that, I didn't do it mostly because I thought it would look stupid. I think I'm going to stop just right there see what it looks like and that'll do it for tonight yeah i just thought of something i think what i might do is make some handles little checkerboard handles to tie the top in with the with the drawers let's so see how we did here we got a little bit more of that covered up the the grain that's exposed the top isn't perfect but not too overly concerned about it i'm going to do one more coat and hopefully get a little bit more coverage over that i'm going to take this 180 grit and just not even apply hardly any pressure just enough to knock down any real high nibs or anything that might be on there so this is the third coat and this is all i'm gonna do somebody just pulled in they might be here to pick up that dresser i did off camera Okay, we're going to go ahead and put on the second coat of gray. thought Casper was coming in here. Well, there's Casper. What you doing, boy? All right, I've been a little confused on what I was going to do for handles, but I've got it all figured out. I do need to seal these, and since the drawer or the door pull will hide most of this. I just don't need any durability to it. Just need to seal that hole. I'm just gonna put some drywall mud on there just because it's handy. I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center point now. I am not liking, they don't look spaced evenly. Yeah, so that's the problem. If we look at these, these are perfectly flush. And if we look at this, look at the gap. I can put that whole lip down in there. I mean, that's a quarter inch or more. Remember how hard those drawers were to pull out? One of them? That's why one of these drawers are not square. And I don't, so those two look pretty good there. Let me swap these out and see. Now that middle one should stick out. Yeah. There we go, those are flush. And now look at that middle drawer. Now what's this side look like? Yep. So what is now that middle drawer is not square. And you see it sticking out over there and now it's 
got that same gap. So we know this is the culprit. I think what we have is just some minor, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's a bigger gap on this end than down here. And then we have how that little bit sticks out right there, but doesn't at the bottom. And inside, the one corner was off just a little bit. See, that's off. That one's pretty tight. That one just a wee little bit. And then this corner appears on the inside to be off, but not on the outside. So 25 and 15 sixteenths, 25 and 7 eighths. All right, so it's not a lot. Let me check that last one. All in all, nothing is that bad. There is an eighth of an inch. And one thing if you ever built a house or a barn, whenever you want to know if things are square, you measure the diagonals. There's 28 and a quarter, 28 and an eighth, a little less than an eighth. So this drawer is the problem. So this is the bottom drawer. What I will do is stand these back up again think instead of trying to measure these I'm just going to run a square and do it this way all right so these are perfect at 12 and 3 eighths and then this one is just 12 and a half I'm just going to move that mark over just I'm going to hit it on the outside of the hole in comparison to drilling in the center here so we'll do four and an eighth from the bottom since these are only on quarter inch Okay, that looks better. So what I've come up with, since we are doing a checkerboard, here's gonna be my pull knob. Pretty cool, huh? We'll take one of these, cut them an inch long or so, and drill out a hole. Cutting short pieces is never fun on a miter saw, and there's not a good way. I, mean, I could put a gauge in there, but I just picked out that as the distance. Eh, an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Small, I don't go all the way through. Otherwise, that piece would go flying. And in case you're wondering how I gauge that, I don't stop it at that depth. I pull this out just a little bit, so it, there it would cut it all the way through. There it wouldn't. Now we have three equal pieces. I guess my drill has been stolen by a thief, or I left it inside. All right, I'm going to pull out some holes here in just about the center. I would actually like some, I wonder if I have black spray paint. Put those on right there. We'll have us some pole knives. Looky here, looky here. I found some black spray paint. Put a little second coat on here, mostly just to get the bottom painted, even though no one will ever see it. I wanna get these sanded down and painted tonight yet, so I can get started on my checkerboard tomorrow. I'm gonna mark the holes. Where'd my punch go? Yeah, this is the one that's off just a little bit. I kind of like that look on the high spots on the wood grain. I might leave it looking like that. Yeah, I, I like that look. That's what I'm going to do. The million dollar question is, can we get the sides to do the same thing? And I do believe we can. But as I was looking for that triceratops that went flying through here, I happen to notice that. That is a wasp nest. It's a little cooler right now. So this would be a good time to tell our little wasp friends goodbye. One good coverage, even though we're going to... I wouldn't call that so much of a distressed look. You may want to call it that. I'm trying to think of a big fancy name that makes it sound more important than distressed. Because I've done my share of distressed furniture. And I can just say I'm... Thankful it's out of style, maybe. I used to enjoy doing those. You get cool looking pieces. But it's like anything that just fads come and go. Just let all this stuff dry overnight. All right, we're back at it this morning. I just thought of something. You probably can't see me very well.
Maybe I should take this off. Let me get this done and then I'll get this off where you can see me. Does anyone know of a spray bottle that works for more than a couple of weeks? If you do, let me know. These things always irritate me. All right. I guess we can start figuring out how to do our squares. So I was giving this some thought and I think what I'm going to do is put some smaller checkers as a functional checkerboard here. And then, well, let me think about it. So a checkerboard I think is eight by eight. I don't think I have any inch and a half blue tape. That narrower stuff is an inch and that thicker roll is inch and three quarters. That's what, that's inch and seven eight. You show those dogs who was boss? See, Casper got a haircut. He got a little infection on his skin. And I took him to the vet, and they wanted $500 to shave him, to give him a medicated bath, which cost $80. And I said, well, I'll shave him. Can I still get the medicated bath for $80? They said, yes. So I come home. After four hours of trying to shave him, I called the vet back and said, can I reserve a spot to have my dog shave and get a medicated bath? And he said, sure. And when I took him up there, he was about halfway done. <laughs> done. He looked pretty silly walking in through the vet's office. My wife just got home and brought me a good old McDonald's coffee. Okay, what we are going to do is find the center of this. Okay, so here is our center. Now what do we do? Um, Okay, so I'm trying to think how to do this. It's making sense in my head, and I'm just putting this on my sweatshirt. Get it so it's not as tacky. I don't think it'll peel this paint off, but this has been on there for 48 hours, so it should be pretty good. Okay, after careful consideration, after meticulously finding the center of the dresser and meticulous calculations with 1.4 inch tape, that has been multiplied. I've taken the square root calculated to find exactly the center of the checkerboard. I have come to the conclusion that I royally screwed it up. And remember when I said things make sense in my head that don't often translate to real life? The checkerboard is eight by eight. I went in and, and checked, but I thought the center of the checkerboard would be the center of a color. That's not the case. The center of the checkerboard is the center where the where four squares come together. So, for whatever reason, I have not been able to figure this out, but I think I have now. I was just trying to get the squares, but then the rest of this, the last square, would not have a border to complete the the actual checkerboard. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it takes 10 pieces of tape, even though you have an eight by eight checkerboard. So this one I'm going to leave on. We're gonna take this one. I think this is right, but we're gonna save the tape because we gotta go that way. So leave, leave tape, leave take, leave. Take. Take. All right, my headache continues to get worse. I don't think that is 13 and an eight. Yep, that's not good. 14 and a half. Pencil. 14 and a half, 14 and a half. Okay. Nurse tape, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
wrong side. Which side? Put it right. I should remove this one, this one, this one, and this one. And if this doesn't work, I'll give you my address. You can come pick up a dresser with checkerboard that's not quite complete. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that was easy. And I just have a little bit of caulk here. I'm just going to seal the tape so we don't get any bleed through. And it takes just a wee little bit to seal that. And actually, you're just kind of pushing it up under the tape. I really want to peel that tape off, but it's going to need two coats. As you can see, that I'm just going to let that dry for a few minutes. All right, I let that dry for about 30 minutes, and now you can see that black coming up through with this really needing a second coat. Because you can see that brush marks just a little bit. So I'm going to make these go in the opposite direction. That'll help contrast. Now when we peel this off, we should have perfect lines because of the caulk. Actually, I'm just going to redo my borders. So that looks pretty good. I'm pleased with that. That'll clean up nicely. And then we'll um, put our border around this, which would be over here and then down here. And then we'll have a functional checkerboard. These are going to be a little bit of trouble to get dead center. Because they got that knob right there. I'm going to try to... Yeah, that worked out pretty good. I'm going to put those behind me so I don't jam my finger when it goes through. Okay, I'm going to give these a quick sand. And I went up and bought these two and a half inch bolts that are too short. I can shorten these, but not on any saw. I will have to hand cut. That's just enough that I'm going to remove a little bit more. Okay. Paint the tips of these screws. Okay. Give that a minute to dry. I don't know where my belt sander is. We're going to need... Okay, doing my second round of taping to get the grays in between each color. I think I just need these, these center ones. That's what I found. Okay, I think I put my outline in the wrong place. I think it needs to go right here. And I want it much thinner. So I got to learn a lot. Let all of that dry sand all this off and then put new lines in where I want them, but they're gonna be a lot thinner. In the meantime then, we can go ahead and put these on. And I'm gonna put just a dab of glue on here. I gotta shorten this one just a little bit and I don't know where my belt sander is. It seems strange that you would lose that. I thought I seen someone in my shop. Maybe they come in and took my belt sander. That's the only explanation. There's no other way for it to have come up missing. If people come steal your stuff like that. And what's crazy is out of all the more expensive things in here, they decide to take that belt sander. Come to find out, they're not very smart. I have this uh, ivory. So I want to put a really thin line outlining this. All right, that looks pretty good. All 
Okay, give that spray paint a few minutes to dry. We'll put on our last little knob here. You wanna come look at these drawers? I figured you'd probably like these. Looks good. Looks cute, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I think I just spoke German. <laughs> what? I think I just spoke some German. I, I don't know what it is. I know it wasn't English. <laughs> I mean, you've often heard me say you make up your own words. No, I think that was German. What? Uh, what? What is John Jay? I don't. I don't know if that's German or what. It, I mean, it could be Icelandic for all I know. Do you like the looks of those? Yeah, I do like the looks of that a lot. The color, even too. Mm -hmm. I figured you would, but I had no idea it would bring out your, you know, inner African Nigerian talk. All right, I screwed up that bottom one. I don't know why I painted it and then I went to wipe it forgetting that it was um, still wet, so I need to fix that. Other than that, I think it's come together decent. I'm gonna fix this before I paint the rest of that. So let that spray paint dry for a few minutes. Okay, I gotta fix that little mess up there. Okay, now let that dry before I wipe it. Okay, we're gonna touch up this black here. Out of curiosity, how many of you would paint the back of that? I've never had a steadfast rule about painting or not painting the back of furniture. I received a couple of comments on the last piece that I did to paint the back of the furniture. It got me thinking on most of my other pieces, I would say I typically do not paint the back of the pieces. I mean, most of the time they're against a wall and many of the times it's it's not the highest quality material and it just ends up looking worse because like this it breaks down so quickly like that cardboard basically so i'm going to start paying attention more to the back of pieces and if i should paint them i'm gonna go on record right now and saying at least in furniture flips where we try to get cheaper furniture to flip for a profit occasionally we come across nicer furniture for instance i just got a free henradon dresser i didn't know that when i went to get it because it just had a picture of the side of the dresser that said free come get and when i got there it was a henradon and i told the couple i said this is a fairly expensive piece of furniture and they didn't care so I took it. That's almost, the dresser is actually in good enough shape where most of us would, would just use it. In fact, it's in our bedroom right now, but I'm going to sand that down, stain it, and bring it back to its original glory. I'll probably do that after we move because I want to take some time with that one. I don't like how this paint's doing. I'll give that some time to dry. Okay, I'm gonna sand these sides a little bit. And not give it a distressed look, but kind of give it a weathered look. All right, don't forget, wherever you live, try to shop local. This is the real milk paint clear wax. And this company, since I live in Tennessee, this is just about a half hour from me in Hohenwald, Tennessee. And this stuff does a really good job of smoothing out imperfections in the paint along with putting a little bit of a hard surface over the top so since this will be kind of a gaming board i wanted to put a wax over top of this i'm going to put it on pretty heavy over the actually game board site and then i'll take and buff this off and also i want to put some wax on these rails so if you like supporting small business Go order you some real milk paint, clear wax. Let that harden for a little bit more and then I'll take and wipe that off. 
All right, we have our finished piece of our chessboard, our checkerboard, or just a cool design on top. And here in just a few minutes, I will be challenging the tax collector to a game of chess. And if you don't know who the tax collector is, here's a little reminder from a previous video. Who are you, tax collector? And what I really like about this piece, when I put the sander on it, I didn't give it a distressed look. But this piece had a lot of almost like textured grain in it. So I just took 180 grit, just went over the top real quick, and it just took off those high spots, leaving it kind of shaded, kind of, kind of a two-tone color here with the gray. There's the drawers, work well. And now, it is time to challenge the tax collector in a game of chess. Hello, tax collector. I officially challenge you to a gentleman's game of chess. Darker light for you, sir. I am dark. Pick your poison. I don't know, man. Something seems off about this here board. I don't know what. I challenge you, sir, to a gentleman's game of chess. Uh, Houston, we... Yeah, that seems to be a problem. Up here... Yeah, I think you might have misplaced something. Uh-oh. Well, let's see. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I was correct. And let's just check this up. I I'm still thinking either the chessboard that we have used for many, many years grew extra pieces, or the guy who we bought this table from shorted us on the number of squares in here. What is it, tax collector? Well, this is an eight by eight, and this is a seven by seven. Yes, so what you're telling me is our pieces grew more. No. Oh, what is it then? The guy who we bought this from messed us over? Yep. I need to create a new game using a seven by seven board. All right, that's not gonna work. Thanks for watching.